Olivia Joseph here. So today I want to talk to you about a top topic that is a chronic issue that is plaguing many, many Americans that we are lost when it comes to, which is cognitive decline, and I want to, which just means brain dysfunction. So I was watching a video last week about um, Dr. Mark Hyman posted this video, and he is definitely one of the leaders and authorities when it comes to natural health care. I've been following him for years. I've been blessed enough to be sitting at seminars with him. I've been blessed enough to be at functional medicine seminars where he was speaking on stage. And what I saw in this beautiful interview that he was doing at a hospital that is is the only functional medicine hospital in the world where he went for treatment when he got very sick was I was reading in the comments section how many people were really judgmental and just hating in the comments about how is it that someone so healthy got sick or how is it that somebody who practices what they preach can get so ill and what I want you to understand is staying healthy is more than just diet and lifestyle. Now, I 100% believe in a healthy lifestyle because lifestyle can activate your genes or help suppress your genetic expression. So your genes are not your destiny, but sometimes there are things genetically that make you a little bit more vulnerable and that's something we're going to talk about. But one of the biggest chronic issues that I see in approaching Hashimoto's and approaching dementia, cognitive decline, and just chronic disease is underlying co-infections such as Lyme disease, mold toxicity, and a chronic Epstein-Barr virus. Now, 90% of the population has been exposed to Epstein-Barr virus. Like any virus, once you're exposed, you should develop immunity to it. But when you test somebody's antibodies and they got exposed 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, their antibodies should not be very, 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 very high. And there are different antibodies that tell you if it's more acute or chronic. So yeah, if you've been exposed to Epstein-Barr virus ever in your your lifetime, you're going to have positive antibodies. But how high are those antibodies and which antibodies are high? That's a bigger question because I will tell you right now in working with people with Hashimoto's, when you're when you look at their gut function, when you look at an anti-inflammatory diet, when you look at the function of their hormone system, the adrenal gland, and all their thyroid hormones, nine out of 10 times, you're gonna see those people improve. But there's that 10% of the population that has an underlying chronic infection, like the ones I mentioned, and they their antibodies are so insanely high, or they keep rising, or they just don't feel better. What you need to understand about these infections is they create a biofilm around themselves. What that means is if you're exposed to Lyme disease, mold toxicity, Epstein-Barr virus, these viruses are so smart they create a, a little film around themselves that make them very hard to penetrate whether you're doing things naturally or whether you're taking antibiotics. So some things that help rupture a biofilm membrane, one thing is NAC or N-acetylcysteine. So it actually helps rupture a biofilm membrane that these organisms create around themselves. So whether you choose to take medication like antibiotics or whether you choose to do more natural things like oil of oregano, candibactin AR, biocidin, things of that nature, it can make it more effective. So these organisms produce something called biotoxins, which means they're releasing toxins into your system, which can make you feel really, really sick. Again, this is regardless of diet and exercise. And this is what happened to Dr. Mark Hyman. So Dr. Mark Hyman got exposed to mold. It wasn't his diet wasn't his lifestyle, he was exposed to a water damaged building. The same thing happened to Jill Carnahan, who again is a medical doctor out there who's a leading authority on mold toxicity. The issue with mold toxicity, Lyme disease, and chronic Epstein-Barr virus is these things mimic each other. They look like each other. And sometimes it's really hard to identify what's what, which I'm gonna to talk to you about. So this isn't something that somebody did with their diet or with their lifestyle they got exposed to a water damaged building. I see this all the time. I had a patient who came in last week or the week before. She literally can barely function. I look at her diet, I look at her lifestyle. It's so healthy, it's healthier than 90% of the population and she feels awful. And she starts telling me all these stories. She flips buildings, she moved into a really old house and she's 
redoing and remodeling this house right now. And we trace back that all her symptoms started when she moved in this house. And I said to her, I said, have you had your house tested for mold or have you started pulling out walls to see if there's black mold growing inside the walls? One week later, she walks in and says, we started tearing up the walls, we found black mold everywhere. And that's a big problem because when you start tearing out this mold, the mold spores get into the air, which is a bigger problem when then they were in the walls. So you have to get yourself out of that environment. It's not enough to just, oh, let me correct this mold. You will continue to be sick because these mold spores will go into anything porous. They can go into books, clothing, furniture, things of that nature. So we're not here to scare you about mold. What I want you to understand is 20% of the population has a genetic predisposition, which is an HLA gene mutation. So 20% of the population is more vulnerable to not just mold toxicity, but chronic inflammatory response syndrome or something known as SIRS, which has a strong correlation, not just with mold toxicity, but also with Lyme disease and also with Epstein, chronic Epstein-Barr virus. So these are things that we cannot reduce our risk for with diet and lifestyle alone and yet we judge people who are healthy that get sick but we forget that sometimes it's a genetic predisposition or sometimes it's exposure to toxins in your environment. Mold is very toxic to your body. So 80% of people with chronic inflammatory response syndrome cases are triggered by exposure to a water damaged building. So a great test that I actually do, one is C3A and C4A, and what that, those are immune markers that help you to determine or delineate if it's more of a mold toxicity or if it's mold, or if it's more of a Lyme disease. And then I do check several immunoglobins to Epstein-Barr virus, so I know if that's what I'm dealing with. And I run that test when I get a good history on somebody and find out that at some point in their life, they've had mono, and now they're dealing with chronic autoimmune diseases like Hashimoto's, which is a huge part of what I do in practice. So C4A elevation is more specific to biotoxins. Elevated MMP9 causes collagen destruction. So one thing that we see with cognitive decline or dementia that starts to develop in people that are young and that younger and also that don't have, that aren't genetic carriers for Alzheimer's, which a very small population percent of the population that has dementia is actually a genetic carrier for Alzheimer's. It's so much more environment, mold toxicity, MTHFR, high levels of homocysteine, gut infections, leaky gut. That's a bigger player in cognitive decline than being a genetic carrier for Alzheimer's. So one test you can do is called a neuroquant, which is like a brain volume MRI. And what it actually shows you is it helps you to di differentiate if mold or Lyme are a player in that cognitive decline or that brain dysfunction. So those are some diagnostics. Let's talk about some lifestyle tools. Now these notes that I'm sharing with you are from Dr. Andrew Heyman and also Dr. Shoemaker, which are the leading experts on these topics. I'm very, very blessed to network with some of the most brilliant functional medicine practitioners in the United States and we have exposure to learning from these experts in these fields but I'm bringing it to you because it's such a huge issue it's such a huge epidemic people sit in front of me so frustrated because they can't get the right testing or because they know they're dealing with these issues but they're being told your testing is normal or it's in your head you've heard me say over and over on my videos that's because you're not getting the right testing right these symptoms are clearly not normal it's not normal to be sick it's not normal to have autoimmune disease it's not normal to have brain dysfunction brain fog it is not normal to be gaining weight even when you reduce your calories even when you exercise like crazy when you are doing those things you are missing something what is it you just have to do the right testing to connect the dots to find out what it is you're dealing with and this topic in particular mold toxicity epstein-barr virus biotoxin illness. It is the hardest thing I see to deal with in practice. I am working with these people for years. It's the hardest thing to manage. I hope and pray you're part of the 90%, not part of the 10% that is dealing with this. But at the end of the day, if this is what you're dealing with, you've got to get the right testing. Otherwise, 
it's inevitability that you'll have to just deal with this. I don't believe in dealing with this. I believe in getting to the root cause. Now, what are some natural solutions that can help you? This is straight fruit through Dr. Andrew Heyman's notes and research. Curcumin, which is also turmeric. Omega-3s, uh, black cumin seed oil, boswellia, stress management, sleep hygiene, and an anti-inflammatory diet. Some underlying factors that have to be addressed are low intestinal motility, which is all known as, also known as chronic constipation. This goes back to gut health, right? This goes back to doing stool analysis, leaky gut testing. Because at the end of the day, if you have a leaky gut, you're gonna have a leaky brain. You're gonna have proteins that are leaking from the inside of your gut into your bloodstream, creating chronic inflammation in your body. This is a problem that has to be addressed. Another thing, some of you may know my story, I had H. pylori that turned on Hashimoto's in my body. Now I'm very blessed, I knew something was wrong, I'm very in tune with my body, my stomach was hurting for a couple years and I st started to develop these thyroid symptoms, um, my hair stopped growing, I was cold, my face was swelling, I had dark circles under my eyes, I was very tired, I had a little bit of brain fog, I gained 10 pounds out of the blue, not changing my diet or exercise, what was it? I ran blood work and my thyroid antibodies were elevated, which meant my immune system was attacking my thyroid. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, what caused this? Not, I have Hashimoto's. I said, what caused this? I did testing on my gut and I had an H. pylori infection, which is a known trigger to autoimmune disease. Ladies and gentlemen, I did not get H. pylori because I was cheating on my diet. I did not get H. pylori because I wasn't practicing what I was preaching. H. pylori is a bacteria that I was exposed to that triggered this autoimmune disease in my body. Klebsiella, Cryptosporidium, these are also known triggers for autoimmune disease, but yet we get exposed to them because they're bacteria or parasites that we get exposed to and they have nothing to do with an unhealthy diet or an unhealthy lifestyle. So I cannot stress enough, gut testing such as stool analysis is so important, but if you are just coming up short and you have these symptoms, get the right testing. And one thing I hear over and over again is, my doctor won't order this testing. Well, guess what? You can order your own testing. You can order your own stool analysis. You can walk into any lab now, which is owned by Quest Diagnostics, and you can self pay for any lab work you want. And behind the scenes, I am building out a virtual health consulting website, dralivia.com. Don't go there yet. It should be live in about another month or two. You'll see a coming soon in which I am giving you do it yourself programs that you can study and also I'm getting you access to the right testing where you can order your own test kits to properly test your thyroid, your gut health, to test your immune system to see if you have been exposed to things like this. You can get your own testing for mold toxicity and Lyme disease and Epstein-Barr virus. You don't need me or your doctor to order it for you. Now, I would love to work with you, but we have thousands and thousands of people following our videos, educating themselves with information, and I am so blessed to be providing you with this. But you have to take responsibility for your own health and you have to get the right testing whether or not you have a doctor who will order it for you or not. You have to advocate for your own health. So please share this with people that you feel would benefit from this information. Stay tuned, I'll announce it from the rooftops as soon as our lab testing is finalized, as soon as DrOlivia.com is finalized. And we will have programs built out where you could do it yourself and you will also have the opportunity to apply to work with me virtually um, as your virtual health consultant for those people that really do need more attention clinically than just a, I want to get access to this testing and do it myself. So thank you so much. As always, you can apply, you can post your comments in the comments section. Myself or someone on my customer support team will do our absolute best to get back to you at our earliest convenience to continue to connect you with this natural information to improve your health and not just improve your health, to get to the root cause. Thanks.